Oh hello there, my name's Professor Hoenn. With everyone and their dog doing Pokemon challenge videos lately, I've been keeping an eye out for challenges that haven't been done yet. And so, I've decided I'm going to beat each Pokemon generation with their pseudo-legendary Pokemon only. And that means starting with Pokemon Yellow and Dratini. Despite having a nice spread of base stats with a slightly higher attack, Dratini's base stats are nothing to write home about, as only 21 other Pokemon have worse base stats in this generation. For comparison, Dratini's base stats are just half of what its fully evolved form Dragonite are. Not only that, but as a pseudo-legendary, Dratini is in the slow experience bracket, meaning it needs 1,250,000 XP points to reach level 100, so grinding is going to be a slow process. And if things weren't difficult enough, Dratini's moveset is, well, lacklustre. It doesn't learn a decent attacking move until level 30, and by the time it learns Dragon Rage, I think it'll be too late to be of much use. However, where Dratini will shine is its TM moveset, as it can learn great moves like Ice Beam, Thunderbolt and Surf. Because of this, I think this challenge will be difficult in the beginning where we have to rely on rap and outspeeding opponents, but once we're past Misty and we have access to better moves, we should be able to beat this game without needing to reach level 100. So, what are the rules? I can only use Dratini in battle, I will however need some HM slaves, but I won't use these in battle. I can't use items in battle, so that means no potions, status healing or battle items, but I can use them outside of battle to heal, and I am allowed to teach Dratini TMs. And finally, no glitches or exploits. I'm recording this before I even start the challenge, so I have no idea how this will go. Leave a comment below to let me know if you think we can do it. With all that being said, let's find out if we can beat Pokemon Yellow with just Dratini. First, we use the Universal Randomizer to change Pikachu to Dratini which we call Initard. See if you can understand why. Dratini's moveset is just terrible. With only Rap and Leah, we struggle with the first rival battle, but manage to win with just one HP. After an eternity of grinding and running errands for Professor Oak, we hit level 10, learn Thunder Wave, and take on the rival again. I take advantage of Thunder Wave and paralyze the Spearow before proceeding to use Leah and Rap until it faints. However, we get unlucky against Eevee as we miss two Raps and get knocked out. I think we can win this with a bit more luck. On my second attempt, I don't even bother with Leah and proceed to wrap Eevee until it faints. Damn, this move is broken in Gen 1. Just to show how badly Dratini's XP gain is, despite beating Spearow twice and Eevee once, we don't level up to level 11. The XP grind in this pseudo challenge is going to be a nightmare. At level 13, we take our first shot at Brock. It's not a complete write-off. We comfortably take out his Geodude by using Leah a few times and then wrapping it until it faints. However, Onyx is faster than us and gives us a taste of our own medicine twice using Bind. With Dratini unable to do anything, we lose. Okay, a few more levels and we should be able to win this. I try again a few times at level 14, but luck just isn't on our side. With a combination of not having enough HP to outlast it and Onyx still outspeeding us, we lose again. Finally, at level 15, we get to nab a win. Now that we outspeed Onyx, it doesn't even attempt to use Bind. Typical. Now it focuses on Screech and Bide, which leads to a smooth victory. With the bold badge in hand, it's time to move on. So far, my strategy for battles has involved paralyzing using Thunder Wave and then using a combination of Leah and Rap to KO my opponents. This works quite well on Route 3, but we need to improve our moveset with diversity and stronger moves. So once inside Mount Moon, we pick up TM12 Water Gun and teach it to Dratini. Now that we have Water Gun, there's nothing really that causes us trouble, and we easily reach the end of Mount Moon. Beat the scientist and claim the dome fossil. Team Rocket ambushes us as we leave, Ekans and Meowth go down to a few Water Guns, but it leaves us with very little health to tackle Coughing. However, I outspeed it, so I switch tactics using Rap to prevent it from getting an attack in. Until we miss two back-to-back -back Raps in a row. Coughing's first tackle knocks us down to just 6 HP. Luck is on our side, however, as Coughing misses its second tackle. For those of you who don't know, in Gen 1, tackle's accuracy is 95%, meaning the chance of that happening was just 1 in 20. Now in Cerulean, it's time to tackle our rival once more. Now we have Water Gun, the battle goes much smoothly than the first time. His Spearer goes down in a few attacks as it mainly focuses on lowering our stats. His Sandshrew and Rattata both go down to two Water Guns, but not before his Rattata brings us down to just 2 HP with a Hyper Fang. Outspeeding his Eevee, however, we use Rap to prevent it from attacking. With only a fraction of health left, we use Water Gun to finish Eevee off. Ah, uh, that did less damage than I expected, and Eevee finishes us with a tackle. Okay, lesson learnt. Let's play it safe next time. 
With the rematch, we take no chances. We paralyze the spear and we use water gun to take it down. However, we have less HP than our first attempt. Sandshrew goes down to a critical hit. We then paralyze the Ratata, but its next two attacks bring us to just one HP. By sheer luck, we outspeed both his Ratata and Eevee, meaning we can use Rap to knock them both out and beat the rival. Whew, that was close. Also, while completing this run, I found an interesting quirk with the Team Rocket member at the end of Nugget Bridge. If you lose, he lets you pass without a rematch, even if you try to talk to him. He just refuses. 18 years of playing this game, and I never knew that. Anyway, we claim the Nugget, beat the remaining trainers on Route 25, help Bill, and claim the SSN ticket. With everything north of Cerulean City wrapped up, we head to Misty's gym to sort her out. At just level 24, the battle couldn't go smoother despite not being able to use water gun because of its ineffectiveness. In order to win, we go back to our old tactic, paralyzing and lowering both of Pokemon's speed with Thunder Wave so we can use a combination of Leer to lower their defenses and then Wrap to trap them until they faint. With the Cascade Badge in hand, we replace Water Gun with Bubble Beam. Route 6 and the SSN pose no problems as we quickly level up as we pick up the Rare Candy, Ether and Elixir, as well as the TM's Rest and Body Slam, which we use to replace Rap. Still on the SSN, our rival's Pokemon levels haven't improved that much. Spearer goes down to two Bubble Beams, Ratata to a single Body Slam, Sandshrew to Bubble Beam and Eevee to two Body Slams. Wow, that was easy. Then again, we are level 28. We speak to the Captain, get the HM cut and progress to the Lieutenant Surge. Once again, luck is on our side. His Raichu uses his first attack to growl, lowering the damage we do with Body Slam. Turn 2, we're hit by Mega Kick, but manage to paralyze it with a second Body Slam. Turn 3, we now outspeed and hit it with another Body Slam, and it retaliates with a Thunderbolt. It takes just one more Body Slam to finish it off, and we claim the Thunder Badge and TM24 Thunderbolt, which we teach to Dratini. I think I've beaten the most difficult part of this game for this run, so let's take a quick look at our stats, which, to be honest, aren't anything to write home about. Where our Dratini really shines, though, is its level and diverse moveset. With Thunderbolt, Thunder Wave, Bubble Beam, and Body Slam, we easily navigate Rock Tunnel, making our way to Lavender Town to challenge the rival. I almost decided not to include this rival battle. At this stage, he's an absolute pushover, as we one-shot three of his Pokémon and almost one-shot his Vulpix. Even does manage to land a crit with Quick Attack as a parting shot, but it does very little damage. Now over in Saladon City, we take on Erika. It does take a few attempts, so we have to rely on Body Slam and Thunder Wave, as Bubble Beam and Thunderbolt are ineffective, and her Gloom and Weeping Bell take us out with a few acid attacks. At level 33, we get a perfect run, paralyzing her Tangle and chipping away with a few Body Slams. We then paralyze Weeping Bell on turn 1 2 and knock it out with a further two Body Slams. Gloom is out last, and we're able to take it down in three more Body Slams and paralyze it on the second. Damn, all the good luck came at once in that run. With that, we claim the Rainbow Badge and head on over to the Team Rocket base in Game Corner. So far on the run, I've been skipping trains left, right and centre just to make sure Dratini's level is on par with everything that I'm coming across. But there are trainers that I have to battle, which has meant my level has skyrocketed. We steamroll through Team Rocket and Jesse and James. It only takes a handful of body slams to knock out each of their Pokemon. With that done, we take on Giovanni. Giovanni's Pokemon are ground Pokemon, meaning Dratini's Bubble Beam one-shots his Onyx and Rhyhorn. Against Persian, I decide to paralyze it first to slow it down and reduce the chances of it hitting us with a critical slash, which would probably take us down in one hit. We then finish it off with a Body Slam and Thunderbolt. Now that we have the Sylph Scope, we head back to Lavender Town where we bump into Jesse and James. Again, these guys never learn. With a 10 level advantage, we wreck them. The only worthwhile thing they do is using Payday, helping to line my pockets. Next, we head for the Sylph Co and the Rival Battle. The battle starts terribly, with a Sand Slash landing a Critical Slash to put us on Death's Door. We somehow manage to lock our way past his Ninetales, who focuses on using Roar, which does nothing as we take it down with Bubble Beam. Up next is Cloyster, who outspeeds us and finishes us with an Aurora Beam. Even with decent luck, there's no way we're getting past his Cloyster until we can outspeed it. So we head to Fuchsia City to pick up the HM's Strength and Surf, and I teach the latter to Dratini. After hitting level 41, and now knowing Surf, we challenge our rival again. We still can't KO with Slam Slash in one hit, which means it's able to lower our accuracy with Sand Attack. 
Ninetales is as useless as the last time, not hitting us at all. Next up is Cloister, which we twice miss with Thunderbolt as it destroys us with Aurora Beam. I try several times and the furthest I get is this Kadabra, at which point I've lost too much health from his Cloister. Yep, I'm going to need to grind, but before I do that, I take a shot at Koga, which goes just as bad. It takes three attacks to kill a single Venonat, at which point we've already been hit with Toxic. Oh, and he has three Venonats, so we can't even reach his Venomoth before Dratini succumbs to poison. There's no point attempting this gym again. I need to grind so I'm at a level where I can one-shot his Venonat. After a couple of hours of grinding, we hit level 50, meaning our Dratini outspeeds our rival's Pokemon. Sand Slash goes down to a single Surf. Ninetales manages to survive and actually does something for the first time in several rematches against our rival. I mean, it's a pathetic quick attack, which does 9 damage, hardly a threat. A second Surf takes him down. Cloyster and Kadabra both go down to a single attack, and Jolteon takes two hits, but goes down without too much trouble either. I'm not going to do a blow-by-blow -blow recap of the battles with Team Rocket and Giovanni. This was so OP that nothing exciting happens. We easily beat them, and we move on. While we're in Saffron City, I take a shot at Sabrina. This battle is interesting. It's won or lost in the first battle against the Abra. If it uses a couple of flashes, our lowered accuracy means we're unable to connect with Kadabra and Alakazam, and their combined psych attacks take us down. We finally get a good run, however, where Sabrina uses an X Defend on turn 1 and misses with Flash. Our luck continues as Kadabra outspeeds and decides to use Recover. Both of those things just blow my mind. Gen 1, eh? Kadabra uses Recover again on its next turn, but it doesn't restore enough HP to survive a second Body Slam. Up last is Sabrina's Ace, Alakazam. Sabrina's AI goes from 0 to 10 as it sets up with a Reflect, meaning our Body Slam only does a quarter of its health. Honestly, at this rate, a critical Psyche would probably one-shot us. Instead, however, it opts for Psy Wave and we counter a Body Slam, paralyzing it. Two more Body Slam and Alakazam goes down, earning us the Marsh Badge and Dratini hitting level 52. Up next is Koga, who honestly has been the bane of this run so far. I haven't told you how many times I've tried to beat this trainer, but it's easily in double digits now. Even at level 52, things get off to a terrible start. It takes two attacks to take down each Venonat, meaning we're poisoned with Toxic. One benefit of Gen 1, however, is that if you KO an opponent, you don't take poison damage. This only delays the inevitable, though, especially as Koga's third Venonat survives on the slimmest of HP and lands a critical Psyche, meaning we have no chance once the Venomoth comes out. That was just terrible. Our next attempt gets off to an amazing start as Venonat uses Tackle rather than Toxic. Koga's second Venonat again decides not to use Toxic, but our luck finally runs out as Koga's third Venonat poisons us and then knocks itself out with Double Edge. Venomoth starts with double team. At this point, I know it's just a matter of time until we succumb to the poison. Then, from out of nowhere, we freeze it with an ice beam, but miss our next body slam, which proves to be the decisive blow, as we're unable to deal enough damage before we're KO'd. If we had just connected, we probably would have won, so I know this is doable. We're getting closer to victory, I can just feel it, so we step up once again. This time, I change tactics, and we use Thunderbolt instead, which takes down all three Venonats in just two attacks, and we get a little bit of luck as none of them use Toxic. Okay, this could be it. Venomoth is out last and uses Psychic, bringing us down to just 21 HP. Koki uses an X attack on turn 2, which I don't actually think benefits Venomoth, does it? A second Thunderbolt paralyzes it, which is crucial, as it means it's unable to attack on its last turn. Finally, Koga admits defeat, and we claim the Soul Badge in the 15th attempt. <laughs> yep, yeah, it took that many. On the way to Cinnabar Island, we stop off at Pallet Town to visit Mum and make a mockery of Oak gifting us the Pokedex, which isn't getting filled up. Unlike my rival's Mum. I can't believe I did that. <laughs> With that little detail complete, we get the Mansion Key and begin to progress through the gym, mucking up on the first question. Seriously, Caterpie does not evolve into Butterfree. Okay, Blaine time. By the way, does anyone else think his overworld sprite looks remarkably similar to Danny DeVito? Anyway, even with Surf, we're unable to one-shot his Pokemon, and the combined attacks of Stomp and Takedown are just too much, and we lose. On our next match, we trade blows with the Ninetales and manage to take it down while keeping a lot of our health. Up next is Rapidash, who wastes a turn using Growl while we hit it with Surf. On our next turn, we outspeed it and take it down. Up last is Arcanine, who starts with Reflect. It takes three surfs to KO it, but before we're able to do that, it hits us with a Fire Blast and we just barely hang on in order to claim the Volcano Badge. If it hadn't been for the terrible AI, we would have lost that again. 
Next, it's time for the third battle against Giovanni. And he's pretty much a piece of cake. Doug Trio goes down to one surf. Persian does pull up a fight with Slash Line and Critical Hit, bringing us down to just below half health. And we miss a Body Slam because of the double team. It then uses Screech rather than attacking us on its last turn, so we're able to connect and KO it. Nido Queen survives the surf, but Giovanni wastes its turn with a Guard Spec, so we're able to put it down. Nido King survives the surf too, but wastes the turn with Leah. Outlast is Rhydon, which is four times weak to water, so one surf is enough to KO it. That was a strange battle. We won, but it felt like we should have lost, but the AI took it easy on us. Ah well, we'll take a win wherever we can. We have just one last hurdle before Victory Road in the Elite Four. Our rival, bleh. I'm not going to go into too much detail on this. We win because of the sheer incompetence of the AI Jolteon at the end. I'm starting to get the sense that the AI is more broken in this game than I remember when I was a kid. With Victory Road done, yes, that little happens, so I'm not going to recap it. Lorelei is our first challenge in the Elite Four, and with so many ice type moves, this could make or break the run. We're a slightly higher level, but unable to one shot in Mons, meaning Dugong and Cloister destroys with just two ice attacks. Yeah, Dratini's level just won't cut it here. We'll need to grind again. Thankfully, grinding doesn't take that long. We've been skipping trainers left and right, so we're able to go back, get some extra XP. Now level 65, we take on Lorelei again. Dugong goes down to a critical Thunderbolt. Cloister goes down to a Thunderbolt too. Slowbro survives, but it wastes its turn with Amnesia. Jinx survives a Body Slam and counters with Ice Punch, which brings down our HP to less than half, but we're able to finish it off with a second Body Slam. Last out is a Lapras. One Ice Attack and it's game over. We switch back to Thunderbolt, but it survives and counters with Blizzard. Luckily, it misses and we're able to finish it with another Thunderbolt. Whew. I think we've gotten past the most difficult part of the Elite Four there. Next up is Bruno. Onyx goes down to a single surf, Hitmonchan to a Thunderbolt. We miss our first attack against Hitmonlee and it survives the second, but we're able to finish it off with a third attack. Thankfully, Bruno wastes both turns using X defense. Onyx is out next, and this one goes down to a single surf too. Last out is Machamp, which takes three Thunderbolts to take out, meaning it's able to get a couple of attacks off. One which misses, and another which does very little damage despite being a crit. That was easy. Thinking about it, do trainers keep using X defense as it is Dratini's strongest stat? If you know, let me know in the comments down below, please. Agatha is the third member of the Elite Four, and it's not a simple battle. It takes a few attempts to beat it. We're unable to one-shot many of her Pokemon, so each Pokemon is able to land a hit, which eventually takes us down. Because I'm unable to leave and grind, I decide to use a couple of rare candies that I've collected on my travels to hit level 71 and try again. On our next attempt, we have an amazing start. Thunderbolt paralyzes Gengar on turn 1, and it misses its second turn due to paralysis. Goldback goes down to a single Thunderbolt, and we manage to freeze Hunter with Ice Beam and finish it off with two Surf Attacks. Arbok is out next, and we Body Slam it. Agatha uses her turn to withdraw Arbok, and the Gengar that comes in wastes its first attack with Dream Eater. It then puts us to sleep, and Agatha decides to withdraw again and bring in Arbok, and we spend four turns asleep. Four turns! And that proves to be the crucial factor in losing this fight. Arbok is able to screech twice and hit us with two acids. We finish it off with a body slam, but the damage is already done. Because we're unable to finish off Gengar, it lands another Hypnosis and finishes us off with Dream Eater. This is frustrating. That battle started so well, but I think with just a bit of luck, we can beat her with our current level. In our winning run, Gengar spends its time using Substitute, which I didn't even know it had. It proceeds to confuse us, but we overcome confusion on our next four turns. That's mad. So we're able to finish off Gengar and her goal back with a single Thunderbolt. Haunter is out again and wastes its turns using Dream Eater and Super Potions, so it goes down without too much fuss. Arbok is out next and she uses her first turn to switch to Gengar, which takes the brunt of a critical surf. The AI then, in its infinite wisdom, goes for a Dream Eater. Okay. It does manage to land a Psychic, but at this point, the battle's won. Both Gengar and Arbok go down. I know I've probably rattled on for too long already on this battle, but just had to show these two runs. Trust me, there was plenty more you didn't see, and the luck was all over the place. Lance is the complete opposite of Agatha, being an absolute pushover. Gyarados goes down to a single Thunderbolt, both Dragonairs to Ice Beam. Aerodactyl takes two attacks, but doesn't do much to retaliate. And finally, Dragonite also goes down to a single Ice Beam. I'm so excited. I know we can beat this run. It just depends if we can do it at our current level. Our rival, Blur, is our final challenge. We get off to a fantastic start, but a combination of being hit by Callista's Ice Beam and getting confused means we don't have enough health to defeat Jolteon. Once again, with the right luck, we can win this. 
I just want to say sorry for the mouse icon in the game capture. I bet you probably didn't notice it until now. Oh, look closer. He's trying to tell us something. If you've gotten this far, please consider leaving a like, you absolute legend. Anyway, before we tackle him again, I decided to replace Ice Beam with Blizzard, hoping this will one-shot Executor. Sand Slash goes down to a single surf. Alexazam wastes its first turn with Recover. We paralyze it with our first Body Slam and finish it off with a second. Blizzard connects with Executor, but it lives. Ugh. It misses Hypnosis, however, and we connect with Body Slam, paralyzing it, and we finish it off with a final Body Slam. Cloyster is up next. Thunderbolt doesn't KO it and it counters with Aurora Beam, but we're still in green health. That's okay. Ninetales is out next, which starts with a quick attack, but we're able to KO with two surfs. Finally, it's time for Jolteon, which outspeeds us and connects with Pin Missile. Our Body Slam paralyzes it, and we outspeed it and finish it with one last Body Slam. With that, we're done, and we're crowned the champion of the Kanto region. Boom! That was a thoroughly enjoyable solo challenge. If a little frustrating against Koga and Agatha towards the end, Jutini's diverse moveset really helped. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, then click here to watch another challenge video. If you really love this video, then you'll love my next one, where I attempt to beat Pokemon Crystal with Larvitar. So subscribe and obliterate the bell icon to be notified when it goes live. Until next time, remember to flex your inner geek. See ya!